Today, I'm going to talk to you about the levels that the escort business operates under. Like everything else in life, everything comes in levels. Uh, whether it's a car, a house, your lifestyle, whatever it is, it's on levels. Um, same thing with any other business. You have small companies, medium-sized companies, big companies, Fortune 500 companies, top 10 companies, whatever. And there's no different in this business. So you have the level, first level would be the person that is just out there on the street trying to make enough money for to rent a motel room or to support their bad habit. Whatever it is, the alcohol, drugs, what have you, gambling. And they're usually on their own. Some of them, they may have a pimp that drives them to that lifestyle, especially if they're younger. Someone that is on their own, maybe a runaway, maybe have a lot of uh, character issues, psychological issues, emotional issues abandonment issues whatever the case may be they get someone that manipulates them in that position tells them he loves them they, that's the, all the pimping stuff that's that's all they're gonna you know he's the only one for them and he's the only one who's gonna take care of them he's the only one that cares about them nobody else does all this brainwashing one-on-one -on -one techniques and he puts them out there and tells them oh we're just doing this for us it's gonna be really better later on we're just going to do it temporarily so we can build our life together and whatever the pimp spiel is so you have that level and usually they usually advertise on back page which is no longer there or craigslist which is no longer there so now i don't know what they're doing maybe they're doing it on twitter or maybe they're doing it on who knows you know uh they, those girls usually don't find on eros some of them you may if the pimp is smart enough and sophisticated enough to put them on places like Eros and, or use the erotic review for the reviews, but for the most part, and I hope nobody sends me bad comments or, or hate me for this, but I'm just telling you the truth. This is what I know. So for the most part, it's on that level. And then you get the little bit higher level than this, which is girls that somehow, some way, maybe they're a little bit smarter, they learned how to post on the internet and take some pictures and it's usually amateur pictures and you know, selfies in the mirror and uh, a lot of them they don't really pay attention to what's on the sink or if it's a messy bathroom if they have clothes all over the bed it just, it just tells you a lot about them that they just don't really uh, live well they're not organized so they do that and they usually charge a hundred to hundred dollars depending on the market and they usually do half hours maybe for, I don't know, fifteen hundred dollars, two hundred dollars for the hour and that level. And you got also girls on that level that work with agencies that have maybe four, five, six girls. Um, just an amateur type of operation, uh, nothing organized really, they just hire whoever doesn't matter what they look like, doesn't matter if they're overweight, doesn't matter if they're underweight, doesn't matter if they're on drugs, they don't care. Uh, I call it like a mom and pop shop. It's usually a girl and her pimp boyfriend that do this, or uh, just a girl that does this and that's done it before and she no longer can do it and she thinks she could be a, an escort agent. And she does it and she charges 200 or uh, whatever. Maybe 100 half hour, 150 half hour, and two or 300 an hour tops. And she just barely screens and just doesn't care whether a girl gets busted or not. And it's really not that emotionally invested in the whole thing. It's just using the person to make money. And so there's a few of those in every city, I'm sure. Those are called, you know, I call that the wannabe escort agents um, or agencies. Then you got the higher level, which is a professional girl that a very smart, a very intelligent, charges five or more an hour, has a lot of credits, knows how to use the erotic review system, which is the Yelp for our business. 
uh, very sophisticated on pictures and videos and a little bit of marketing. Maybe they get some help, uh, like I've done in the past with my a couple of my exes when I first got online, and uh, they elevate their game. Uh, some of them have quote unquote assistance with somebody that either answers the phone for them as them or as an assistant depending how they advertise how they want to play it because a lot of times you might be talking to a girl thinking it's the girl but it really isn't uh, and they do their emails and the texts and all that stuff so they can have, have help because it's hard to do everything yourself it's hard to manage your business and do the jobs at the same time because nobody's there to answer the phones you're going to get exhausted by the 10th or 20th or 30th guy that calls it's full of crap that's not never going to intend on uh booking or even seeing you so they just want to either waste your time or you know jack off excuse my french uh, it's just it's the truth because out of every hundred calls i used to get uh, i would throw away about 95 of them uh, hey do you want to party hey do you have all this stuff uh so that's the second level there's also the, the third level whatever level we're on uh, i'm not counting uh, there's also a better level than that, which is someone that's very, very upscale, very beautiful, 9 to 10. They're experienced, they've been doing it for a while, maybe 8 years, 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. They're usually in their 30s, maybe early 40s, and they don't look their age. And they know how to get 1,000, 1,500 or more from each client by the hour, or two hours, or, or a date as a bulk date. Those are the girls that shoot for the best of the best in this business, which is the exclusive arrangement. Other people call it sushi daddy. And those are the ones that make you the most money. So those girls are sophisticated enough to try to turn their VIP clients into an exclusive arrangement. And if you watched or listened to my uh, sugar daddy video, read my sugar daddy chapter on my book, I go more into detail about that part, which is actually the ultimate in this business. That's the Bugatti for selling cars. That would be the Bugatti in this business. Basically, you have one client that gives you 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 a month, and you see them three, four, five, ten times a month, or whatever the other arrangement is. That's what's called an exclusive arrangement. And that's how that works in a nutshell. Now, what I did was exactly what that escort, high-end escort did, but I did it where I created the environment, being called locations in Orange County for the clients and for the women to meet. I made sure that the women are on, us, on that level, even though they had never done it before, but they had certain character traits I was looking for. Uh, they were beautiful. Gorgeous face, beautiful body to care of themselves, no drugs. Or if, if, it, if they did drugs, maybe it was minimal, but they didn't do it when they were working. But I really paid attention of no drugs, drugs equal drama. They had something positive to do with their money and they were smart. They wanted to pay their student loans off. Or, and I went through that before with you guys, uh, explained all that. And they wanted to buy a house, start a business, you name it, something good. So I put everything together on that scale and I've always kept an eye out on the gentleman that fell in love or in lust or whatever, you fill in the blank, with their client, uh, with their uh, escort. And I made sure to keep an eye on that client and try to cultivate them and turn them over and change them into an exclusive arrangement, which was better for the client and the escort. Because it guaranteed the client a certain amount of meetings, certain dates every month or every week. And it also guaranteed the escort that they don't have to see too many people. Sometimes it was totally exclusive with just that one person, depending on the amount of money that was uh, negotiated. So basically, the only level that I think would be even higher than the way I did it, which everything was upscale, we started at five, so most, most dates were between eight and 1200 for about 20 to 30 minute session. And of course we had some exclusive arrangements that were in the, 
I got five figures a month. So that was very profitable for the woman. The only other agency that might be a little bit on the upper scale that even what I did was the and I don't see anyone in operation, at least not in the US. There used to be a couple back in the day, years ago, where they were so exclusive that it had to be 10,000 or more just to meet that particular model. And they called them models. And some of them were actual legit models, runway models, fashion models, uh, Victoria's Secret models. Now, I did that with a couple of my exes that were penthouse pets and Victoria's Secret models. And I've worked with a couple of them actually in Orange County and in Vegas. Or they were legit models and we were able to get those numbers uh, but that was very rare but there is agencies international agencies um, that really exclusively work with those kind of models and they have some actually good name actresses that do this kind of work of course they don't advertise it because they want to be discreet and be able to continue doing their mainstream work or assignments or what have you or gigs but those exist and they cater to um People like uh, sheiks and princes and uh, government people and very well-known public figures in different countries. And those things exist, uh, but uh, you don't really hear about them because they keep it very discreet. So, uh, like everything else, it's all about levels. What I did is I made sure that everything was classy, the places, spent a lot of money and time on decorations and making sure that they got everything they needed in those places from towels to soap to body wash to you name it, to even the smell and the feel when you walked in, it put you in a really good, sexy, seductive mode. It was all by design. Just like when you walk in a casino, they have all these smells and certain push, uh, you know, oxygen into the air through the duct ducts and all that stuff. So. I did, I used the same concept like they did, but for this business and the girls, the way they look, their hair, the nail, the makeup, everything is on point, the outfits, just everything. I very, very uh, detailed, paid attention to all these details and I trained the escorts to do that as well and be very mindful of everything and not to leave anything laying around and just keep it really nice and clean. All the places were spotless. I had a housekeeper that went in and cleaned on Saturdays and we kept the places really nice because nobody lived with them. We just, we used them about eight or nine hours a day tops. Um, so yeah. And the clients uh, expected that. And I liked that because of the clients that I was looking for. So ex they expected this type of service. So that's about it for today. Um, I just wanted to go over the levels uh, of this business. And don't forget, there's people that do it different ways. If somebody marries for money, that's really working in a different way. If somebody goes out with guys that have money and they get gifts, it's also doing it in a different way. Uh, Beverly Hill housewife that never worked in her life, but she goes and scores and lives in a mansion and has a cook and, and she doesn't have a 10th grade education. That's a working girl. Sorry, but it's true. So they come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, if you go to uh, Fashion Island in Newport and see 19 year olds walking around with uh, Louis Vuitton bags, Versace, Gucci, Coco Chanel uh, at 19 and driving a brand new Bentley, a Ferrari, Lamborghini, whatever, guess what? They're working. Okay, so you get the idea. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I appreciate you. I thank you. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay positive, and find your happiness and make it happen. Thank you so much, and I will see you later.